Hey everybody, uh, Ryan Floyd, managing partner at Storm Ventures, here with another video, part of my video blog series on giving you some advice, similar to I might give you if I was an investor in your business or on your board or just what you'd like to hear from a venture investor. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about churn. I've actually broken into two part videos. We'll first talk about you know, churn, what is it? And then in the second part of the video series, we'll talk about what to do about it. But today we'll talk about the dreaded, the dreaded churn. You've worked so hard to get all these customers and then they leave. And what do you do about it? So let's get into churn. So what, what is churn? Well, churn simply put is loss of customer revenue. Some people look at logo churn and logo churn can be interesting in terms of loss of numbers of customers. But really when you look at what impacts your business, certainly in enterprise B2B businesses, you're really looking at dollar churn in terms of what's really important to be looking at because there's probably going to be a variance in customers. And look, if all customers are exactly the same uh, uh, amount of revenue that they're paying you, then customer logo churn and revenue churn will be virtually identical. But in this case, we're going to be looking at dollar churn and why that's really important. Um, in, in the way to sort of think about it in SaaS is that it cuts both ways with these SaaS business models. The good news is people sign up for a subscription and you kind of get this annuity that pays over time so long as you're delivering value. Obviously the downside is, is if you fail to deliver that value, they have the ability to potentially leave. And with the cloud and APIs and people becoming much more digitally literate, it's getting easier and easier for many people to decide to move on if they're not getting value out of what you're delivering. First, let's talk about perspective. The way to look at churn is it's really your opportunity to improve. Another magical thing about SaaS is this constant feedback loop where customers can leave if they're not getting value. So I tend to be kind of a glasses half full kind of person. And so the way I sort of think about churn is it's really your ability to improve, improve your processes, your product, and everything you're doing with your customers. And the reality is everybody has churn. So don't fret because you're gonna have periods of high churn that things are gonna happen and it's okay because it happens in every business, but come at it from the perspective of, you know, it's your opportunity to figure out how to do a better, a better job in terms of selling. So there's really, you know, once we move on past logo churn, there's really two kinds of churn to really think about, gross churn and net churn. So gross churn is looking at your canceled business against the ARR uh, over that same period uh, in terms of what you know, would have come up for renewal. And you might want to look at it over an annualized period over a longer period of time because you may only have had some contracts that came up for renewal in any given period. So looking at monthly numbers, especially if you have a business where people are paying annually in advance, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You need to sometimes look at it more on aggregate or, or an average number, a trailing average, things like that, to think about really where your churn is headed. But it's looking at, again, sort of what your overall business is canceling against what your ARR base is. The other important metric in churn is to think about what's called net churn. What's different about net churn is net churn takes into account the concept of uh, not only your renewals, your base, but also your expansion and then also you know, any contractions that you might have had as well. The reason this is important, especially with respect to the upsells, is that in any SaaS business, Really, one of again, that's with things that's magical about SaaS is the compounding nature of SaaS. And if you're not focused on churn, not only in terms of cancellation, but upsell, it'll be very hard to grow. And obviously, if you've got lots of customers that are canceling, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be driving a lot of upsell. So the two go usually very much hand in hand, not always but often very much hand in hand. But it's important to look at them separately because if you have a lot of expansion in some accounts, uh, you may miss some of what the gross churn is as well and may present different issues to sort of look into. So both numbers are important to be looking at. So let's talk about really what, what is acceptable in terms of churn. How do I really think about it? Am I doing a good job? Am I doing a bad job? Obviously, if you can drive your gross churn to zero, that's ideally where you want to head to. It's unrealistic. Nobody's perfect. You're always going to have some customers that are going to churn. Maybe they go out of business, you lose your champion, all these sorts of things. They're going to happen from time to time. And so an expectation of having zero gross churn, just simply unrealistic. We're only going to talk about benchmarks though with respect to gross churn. Why? Because it's very hard to compare 
at least for me, when I look across our portfolio and general benchmarks, when you try to compare net churn, because there's so many other factors there. Does your business, does your business lend well to upsell? Uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, then comparing those numbers are much harder. So, but if we just talk about gross churn, generally speaking, you're going to see higher churn rates when you have lower ACVs and lower churn rates when you have higher ACVs. Why is that? Well, you can imagine if you spent a lot of uh, time and energy gaining a customer who invested a lot with you in terms of dollars, the value proposition ought to be pretty significant. You invested a lot of time making them successful. They've invested a lot of time trying to make the product successful in their organization and likely churn rates are gonna be lower versus if you're in, an org if you're in a situation where the ACVs are smaller, call it five, 10K a year, and then uh, uh, the customer maybe doesn't have the same investment in you and your product, it's much easier for them to make a decision to churn. And similarly, just because of the volume that you have to do at those price points, you just don't get the same amount of time to invest on a per customer basis. So with that having been said, what should you expect? Well, in the SMB, small union business market, you know, where, where ACVs, annual contract values are gonna be much smaller, you probably are gonna see gross churn rates 20% or more. But the customer acquisition cost and, and, and your, your marketing cost to gain those customers is probably gonna be, uh, should be much, much smaller. So all of the math still works. In the mid market, you might see 15% churn with those customers. And again, you know, the, the investment on sales marketing side, it's greater, but it's not as big as it would be for large enterprise customers. So you're gonna see, you know, sort of a 15, maybe a 15% churn number, gross churn number in for that uh, band of companies. Once you move into the enterprise, you really want to be looking at 10% or less. And, and the reason is, uh, you know, kind of the, the opposite reasons for the SMB category, you've invested a tremendous amount of money gaining these customers. You've probably flown somebody out to go visit them to God knows where. You've probably invested, you know, three, six months in a sales process. You probably spent a whole lot of money on sales and marketing and maybe you had webinars and all these things to get those enterprise customers interested in what you had, boy, you don't want to lose them because the dollar value is very high. And so if you've got churn rates that are greater than 10% in that enterprise category, you just think about all that investment that you made, ah, <laughs> it's kind of gone up in flames. So there's something missing on the value side in terms of how you're thinking about those enterprise customers. Also, if you think about it too, you don't have as many likely as many customers at the enterprise level. And so you've probably got people who should be able to spend time in those accounts, making sure that those accounts are happy and seeing value with your product. And value is what we'll talk about in the second video in terms of really thinking about how to solve your churn problem, which is what we'll talk about uh, uh, next. But for now, I hope that gives you a good sense of how to think about churn, what some of the benchmarks are, why it's so critical to your business, especially around the compounding nature of SaaS. Please leave me comments down below, subscribe, share with your friends. I really enjoy this. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.